Hey, Coach, thanks for taking the time. We'll get started with Paul and then Chris Franklin. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Um, Jake had uh, two of his five kickoffs, I think the last two on Sunday, you, you kicked it to uh, McLeod. Uh, intentional, and will there be more of that going forward? I mean, or is something you're looking at doing more as the weather gets colder? Yeah, no, we'll, I mean, we'll see how it goes. One of those things I think he took out of the end zone, like five yards, six yards deep. Um, and then the other one I would say was more of a returnable ball. Um, but uh, we'll play with it. Obviously, there's not as many touchbacks, or there's more touchbacks earlier in the year. As you get later in the year, not as many. Um, so obviously we got to get ready to cover um, a bunch of those things. But I feel like our guys did a good job. We knew those guys were good in the return game. They had two good returners, um, both on punt return and kickoff return for them. And uh, I felt like our guys did a nice job against them. I'm not going to get into specifics on our strategy all the time necessarily, but uh, we, we all know that as the year goes on, more and more balls are returned. So we got to get ready to continue to improve in coverage there. Hey, Dave, uh, what were so many uh, issues that occurred on the uh, kickoff returns? It looked like there's times the ball went short of the goal line and you guys had trouble getting it past up to at least the 25. What were yeah, some Yeah, no, uh, I agree with that. I was hoping Les would ask because, you know, I mean, it's the punt return. Uh, no. <laughs> But I know you were coming. Um, no, I would say this. At the end of the day, we did not play well enough in that phase, obviously. Um, and uh, we got to do a better job on kickoff return. We just didn't do a good enough job of executing. Obviously, uh, I would say I did not do a enough, good enough job of coaching it. We had moved some guys around. We obviously um, we had some players in and out. And uh, I had shuffled some guys around. I think I talked a week ago to you guys about moving some guys, trying to get them in more optimal positions. I would say some of those decisions, uh, looking back on it in hindsight, weren't great by me. Uh, that's my fault. Um, and then I don't think we you know, probably had our best execution. I think a lot of guys would say that on some of those plays. I would say this, at the end of the day, we got to get a lot, a lot better in a lot of areas. Um, there's a long season to go. Um, we got to continue to look to improve, and certainly we got to improve a lot on our kickoff return. Back and then less. Hey, Dave, I, I know you said you don't want to spend each week talking about what the range was for that particular game, but uh, this, this was noteworthy because of the 57 yard field goal. I think that would have been the longest field goal in Heinz Field history. Going into the game, what was Jake's range, and, and how do you think that kick went? Yeah, I'll say I'll say the same thing. I mean, I'm not going to talk specifically about the line and the range and the target line and how much time was on the clock and what we we're trying to get. But uh, I do know that I felt really good about hitting that kick. I, I I hear you when you say you know that's one of the longest field goals or the longest field goal on Heinz Field. I would say we base. I mean that that adds into it. You think about that to some degree, but at the end of the day, what we really go off of is how a guy's playing on that day in that stadium. Uh, with those conditions, that wind, that temperature, um, all that stuff. Uh, Jake was really confident going into the game. His pregame warm-up was really good. He hit the ball really well going that direction. We chose the side of the field in the second half so that we would have that side in the fourth quarter. Um, he was hitting the ball better that way in pregame. He felt real good about it. He had hit a number of deep kicks on that side of the field right there uh, in the pregame. I think the last one he took was a 58-yarder. Um, and he had made all those. I felt real confident in him going into the kick. I had said that to coach um, in that situation in the game. And uh, we ended up pushing it a little bit wide right. Um, so at the end of the day, we didn't get the job done. It's our job to do that. We all know that. Um, I'm glad we got the opportunity. I'm glad coach believed in us. I'm obviously disappointed that we didn't get the job done for him. Uh, I still got a lot of confidence in Jake uh, going forward, and uh, I, I think he's striking the ball really well and in a really good spot. I think he's got two misses on the year. Both of them are in the 50-yard range. I think one at 53, now one at 57, and he made, I think, a 54-yarder there. So I, I, I got a lot of confidence in him, feel great about where he's at, where that group's at. Obviously, on that play, uh, we did come up not short, but a little wide right. Um, well, for, less than the, week, yeah. for, the, for the second week in a row, that was actually the question I wanted to ask. So I'm back to asking about returns. Back to one, return. one thing that wasn't covered earlier, um, yeah. 
have you? I, it looked to me like on those kickoff returns that they were just getting on top of Boston Scott very quickly. But you have other guys, you know, with kickoffs and punts other than Ward. Have you thought about switching up any of that, any of, of those duties at all? Yeah, no, I'm glad you asked difference? the question. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. I would say this. I have thought about it. I mean, we think about all that stuff every week, but I would say um, – I, I totally believe in the guys we got out there. I said that to those guys in our meeting earlier today. I believe in the group blocking for them. I believe in the returner. I believe in Boston, obviously, um, and those guys blocking for them. I know we can do a better job, and uh, I, I didn't put those guys in a good enough spot. We didn't execute well enough. Um, they got on us. I know we're all disappointed in, in that. We know we can help our football team better than that. It's an important play that the first one started the game. That's not a good way to start the game. Um, and we take a lot of pride in that. We always have since I've been here and really this organization. Um, and uh, we got to do a better job. We're working really hard to get it right. And there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll fix it. Thank you. John and then Dave. Hey, Dave, um, uh, on, on Jake's kick, typically if you, you know, somebody pushes something that close right on a 40-yard kick, I mean, it's going to be uh, the snap, maybe the hold, maybe just the kicker mishitting it. When you're that far out, uh, was it just a matter of, of, of the distance or was the, the mechanics of the kick, were, were they all there for you? Yeah, no, I felt good. I felt good about the operation. I think Jake would say the same thing. And, you know, truth be told, uh, you know, I felt pretty good about his kick. I think he might have towed it just a little bit. At the end of the day, when you start pushing the ball back really far, back there 57 yards on that one, the further back it goes, the less margin for error there is. And you just got to hit everything perfect. You're talking millimeters, you know. Um, so at the end of the day, we're probably just millimeters off a little bit. Um, but that's why those long kicks are really hard is because there's just very little margin for error. But, uh, I mean, I, I felt good about the execution of everything. Um, and I even felt good about the kick. Obviously, he just probably towed it off just a little bit, which pushed it to the right just a little bit when it's 57 yards out there. Just a little bit to the right over the course of whatever, 57 yards ends up being just a little off. Even then, Zach. Hey, Dave, when you, when you have a, a long field goal attempt like that, when do most of the conversations between you and Doug kind of occur? I mean, is there like setting up before the that series of plays? Is it before the game? Is it right before the kick? Yeah, no, I would say uh, it's probably all of the above and then even more than that. You know, you talk during practice during the week. We talk about where we're at, where Jake's at, how we're feeling, how he's feeling. Um, we see that early in the week. I mean, we talk in the off season about some of the stuff. You know, I'd say there's a lot of conversations. It's it's more than just one conversation on game day. I mean, on that on that one, we talked before the kick. You know, I felt really good about it. Um, sometimes leading up to it, we talk about it at halftime, which direction we want to go, why, the when, how we feel about it. So I would say there's numerous conversations that go on. Um, but, yeah, so it's more than just one conversation. It's, it's a lot of dialogue through a long period of time, including game day. Hey, Dave, if you look at, at, at this weekend's game, the, the Ravens traditionally have strong special teams. Obviously, Justin Tucker, DuVernay had the kickoff return touchdown. What do you see from from this unit in particular? Yeah, no, these guys do a great job. Obviously, Horton, their special teams coach, does a really nice job. And then they got Harbaugh there. Um, you guys all know him. He did an unbelievable job here. He's a great coach. Uh, and uh, they do a really good job um, in all four phases and then uh, all the big four core phases. And they do a good job on field goal, field goal block. They're well coached across the board and they got good players. They play hard and uh, they do a good job of execution, which is really what all these plays come down to. Any other questions for Coach Phipp? All right, thanks, Coach. All right, appreciate it.